split, though. They've beaten the teams that they were expected to be better than. And you have to consider they were expected to be better than Coast. We'll see if that happens here. Aurelia, Nar, Ari all removed away. Yeah, uh, looks like a lot of uh, top lane focus here for Team Liquid with the Aurelia plus Nar. Ari's just a really strong pick right now. If you're mm -hmm. not first, uh, if you're not willing to first pick that, then you probably want to ban that away. But really just a lot of powerful picks spread across the board. Not much targeted. Now, just the general things you expect to play. Piglet is not going to get Kalista. Mash does not want to face that champion. No Ari for special, but it does mean instead of fire, you get ice. Lissandra well, picked up for Team Liquid. Okay, so that means that Janna is also still up right now. Uh, jungler of choice, Jarvan, also available. Uh, I mean, Impaler could easily go with Rengar, though, and they could easily save that one. Dominate has not played Rengar very much in the North American LCS. True. I also, Jarvan, like, yeah. I also like, of the powerful picks, Lissandra's a really good one to first pick, just because she's so flexible and she works in pretty much any team comp. Yeah, I think she sets up a lot of very great things, and at the very least, like, becomes a wave clear bot if you guys get behind. So, Sivir Jarvan, team fighting power picked up for Team Coast. Attack speed and movement speed going to be added to the entire lineup now. Interesting. All right, so Team Coast's going to go with uh, the speed up comp here. Two of the really good combos for those t first picks have already been banned out by Team Liquid, though. Aurelia and Nar. So I'm very curious what Coast are going with in that top lane, especially since they're going to have to work around Lissandra. All right, now Rek'Sai, though, the very quick grab. Now, of course, we did see Rek'Sai top just last game. There's always a chance that it's Lissandra mid. Rek'Sai goes, goes up there. Dominate, though, not looking to grab anything too special, though, grabbing a jungler when junglers have already been taken. Yep, it looks like uh, trying to wait as long as possible for the mid laner to give that one away. Piglet also going to hold on to his AD carry, even though Sivir's already shown. And that is not one of the AD carries that flexes mid. Typically not. I don't know, there's always a chance. Jarvan weren't, didn't used to be a mid laner, and Froggen played it a bunch in like Season 2. That's it, exactly how the Lee Sin mid started as well. Yep, exactly. Same deal uh, there. Sorry on is. top. It's going to be the grab Morgana support for Sheep facing up against Nami. I don't personally love Morg into Nami, but it's the pick he's going with anyway. We have seen Morg just have a really big effect as far as mid game um, and picks are concerned because picking people off in the mid game is how you gain so much advantage in a lot of these squads. The thing is, though, Ooh. Zion here for top lane. I'm sure uh, there are a whole bunch of very happy AD carry players. Everybody likes to see Piglet play Vayne. Mm -hmm. He's going to use his own skin. Gosu's probably pretty happy right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he can use his uh, SKT skin as well. And again, we've already seen how Xerath, if Xerath gets an early lead, uh, because of the way his kit works, because of all of his da damage is such long range, mm -hmm. it's very simple for you to end out the game. As Bjergsen said, he just he feels very confident if you get ahead on that early because your path to victory is very clear. Right. <laughs> Hit people at a thousand range <laughs> away and keep on moving. So Team Liquid, a lot of aggression available to these guys. Their comp looks wow. pretty clear. Kill a bunch of people. Cassiopeia, though, for Jess, is, this is not a good matchup. Yeah, I'm really surprised that, actually, that they picked it after the Xerath. This is typically a matchup that... Uh, Cassiopeia has a very tough time in getting outranged by Xerath. Mm -hmm. We'll see how he does in. We have seen people pull it off, like Link was able to pull it off. Uh, if you get some jungler support, right. any matchup is winnable. Right, right. When we talk about these matchups, this is just in isolation <laughs> if, they, if they're not affected. But we'll mm -hmm. see how Jezus can perform on that Cassiopeia because Jarvan is definitely one of the junglers that you would like to have at your back. Yes. There's always two ways to think about the matchup. You can think about it as the one-on-one -on -one or the two-on-two. -two. Cassiopeia Jarvan is a lot of damage, and they could blow him up. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. Now, guys, before the champs start littering the rift themselves, head over to Twitter and let us know who you think will prevail. Tweet hashtag TLWin or CSTWin to at LOL Esports on Twitter. And Piglet is a dragon slayer. I'm a little bit sad. Piglet is on Vayne. This is going to be exciting. So the one thing I really like um, Vayne around Scion it's one of the AD carries that can easily dodge almost all of his abilities uh, and take him down very quickly as well with Silver Bolts. You know what else I like about Vayne, by the way? She's really good against Jarvan because you can pin him against his own Cataclysm and just kill the guy. That is quite true. It feels true. really good. Did they fix the tumbling out of Cataclysm? I think you still can. Because I feel like that is one of the most annoying things. <laughs> to my knowledge, you still can. Still able to tumble out of that, so 
Extra bonus for bottom lane. Also, speaking of tumbling, you know, Piglet, definitely a lot of experience on this champion. Piglet should be able to avoid a lot of Sivir's damage. Uh, should be able to sidestep boomerangs. And also, Vayne doesn't really rely on a spell for her trading yep. since she uses the tumble damage. So Vayne actually a really good pick, specifically into this early pick Sivir. And why I was... You know, fairly cautious, since sivir has been getting super popular. People are first picking her all the time. We were waiting for somebody to actually punish that in a two versus two heads up. And that's why they look for these deep wards as well. Trying to figure out where these lanes are going to end up. Whoa. Uh -oh. He's... Um, is he going to rush it? Oh, he does. Piglet sniffs <laughs> him out. Ships in the night. Out they go. He also even pinged the other bush, so he may... He may suspect that Mashmi left that ward in the, inside the bush. Well, let's see what the lane assignments end up being. Looks like Mash I not going to recall. Quas will be double jungling, as will Chris. Actually, Chris could probably solo jungle. Because these wards have been uh, so commonplace now to see the lane entries, everybody just waits as long as possible. Now Morgana finally crossing that ward threshold, and they will be alerted. Two versus two, standard lanes here. Currently, the top laner here for Team Liquid down bottom because they weren't quite sure if Coast were going to try to rush it. Top laner, of course, for Team Coast. Scion pretty much always. Oh no, he's going to die! Some broken camp. shard, no! Good acting freak, I like it. <laughs> this is, of course, the point that Chris is going for. Trying to use the side passive to get the very quick gold and experience off of a camp. Then revives right at the fountain, purchases, and teleports up top with the extra money. That's one of the more tame starts that I've seen with Scion. <laughs> uh, I'm a, definitely a big fan of it either starting at a buff or even going for early dragons. See how he does up top, though. Quash should be just fine, even though Scion got the early two and will be spamming his shout. Lissandra doesn't really have a problem getting shoved. Very easy wave clear. Yeah. Built into her kit. Piglet already taking command of this lane. Okay, so Nami Vayne. Silver bolts at level two here. Nothing spell shieldable at all for Sivir as far as the Vayne spells are concerned. Yeah. I'm really well, I mean, if you are good enough to spell shield a condemn, then rats. Yep. Whoops, Piglet. Already uh, 0 for 1 on Dark does, Binding Dodges. Does it not count? What? Uh, condemn? Can, yeah, you can you can spell shield condemn. Yeah. You have uh, to get it on the before it hits you. I'm glad that we're seeing this matchup as well, too, Ooh. because uh, Piglet's mechanics are really going to be put to the test since he's going to be dodging not only boomerangs, but also bindings. I think Piglet's missed like seven CS so far. Well, Impaler is seen by this ward, and Team Liquid are doing their best to waste his time. You can see he's sort of hovering around. They haven't completely uh -oh. given away that they saw it. Now it's a test of those. Ooh, that was so mechanic. close to special. Nice knock up there. Force him to flash away. Level two, of course, he doesn't have Condemn yet. Would have liked to Condemn driving into that wall. Yeah. But he successfully wasted jungler time. All it cost them is one potion on special. So bottom lane here for Team Liquid. Uh, they created early pressure shoving in. Oh, did cost him his flash. Uh, they created early pressure, though. And forcing the jungler to show that early is going to give Dominate a pretty good lead. Dominate was able to use that time to back already, and he has Trailblazers. Mm -hmm. He can just run through the jungle now. Uh, or come in for an extra gank with his level advantage. Smites down. Jumps over to his dragon. Okay, sure. Yeah, up 5 CS. He's level 4 to Impaler's 3. And there's the first deep ward. Okay, so Flash is down, and he spent some time making sure that there shouldn't be any easily uh, repeated gank spot lane. Also, I love taking the first crabs. Very easy source of gold, especially since he's already upgraded his machete. Backline shoves and tries to back here. Piglet with a very nice CS lead early and wave control. So everywhere else should be fairly calm right now. Jarvan having showed early, uh, after you go with an early gank like that and you don't get anything out of it, mm -hmm. it makes you a little bit more cautious to go with any subsequent ganks because not only is he at a level disadvantage, but he has no idea what Dominate has been doing, where Dominate has placed his early wards. Oh, yeah. So anything that Impaler goes for, he has to think, 
Dominate can possibly be here. I may be going over a ward for it. That's why he immediately also heads to the Raptor camp, gets that Raptor smite so that he knows he's not going to get counter ganked. Oh, very smart stuff so far. Both mid laners have now recalled once. Jess's backed for a tier and some more potions. And we had Phoenix back for his Fiendish Kodak. So close to equal CS for these guys. It is an advantage for Zareth, to be fair. Whoa. And Paylor already looking aggressive, though. That, he's got the sonar vision. He has, and Phoenix is already here. This is a really bad spot for Impaler. He, wow. He gets faked out. Oh, Condemn nearly catches Chris. Actually, lane swap did come in, by the way, for Coast. That was what the early recall was about. Well, look at the, uh, the uh, Impaler was a little bit early here. He could have gone for that invade a couple seconds later and had Sheep at his back. But since he went so early, he got scared off by the Xerath animation that he thought was going for him. Because at five minutes, you do not think that blue buff is still up. Sure. This is all because Dominate with that, went with that route in order to get his Trailblazer really early, and Rek'Sai does not need blue for an early jungle clear. He left it up, and the weird timing on blue threw Impaler off. He had no idea that Xerath was actually trying to just get his blue. Very interesting stuff, though. Phoenix level 6 with a blue buff, though. Going to be happy. It does land poke on Jesses, and this matchup's going to get so much harder now. Team Liquid. Enemy jungler, no flash. Team lane swapped away. Let's go ahead and sneak a dragon here. No one's going to be really contesting this at all. And heck, even Silverbolt's going to help quite a bit. Yep, should be easy. Uh, as you can see, Piglet tumbling into the wall there for quicker damage. Get his autos off slightly faster. We'll see how Chris can do in the bottom lane. Trying to soak up experience here. Alrighty. Well, Chris, Glacial Shroud. At least he's got some durability to himself, but Piglet getting solo farm here and being very uncontested means nothing stopping the Vayne train. Typically, her big weakness is the early lane. Neither the 2-on-2 two -two nor the 2-on-1 is going to hurt that at all. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I really like it, picking it into the Sivir comp here. The other thing is, they could easily lane swap back and try and chase down this coast bottom lane. Uh, because Sion is itemizing armor right now, timed with the lane swap. Oh yeah. If they swap back, Lissandra would have a fairly easy time pushing on Chris and harassing him. But it looks like it is Team Coast that are going to make the swap back. And they actually sent Chris up top. Interesting. So they got him out of that lane, seeing that it was pretty abysmal. Yeah, I'm just not sure what Ghost are trying to do right now. I mean, now. nobody can go into this duo lane versus Piglet and have a very sh good time. We'll see, though. Uh, first back for him nets him a full Cutlass. So whoever does go into that lane is going to have to be worried. Anytime you ex add that extra slow into Vayne's kit mm -hmm. in a long lane, yeah, kill pressure does go up. And you already had Nami for that as well, so it just gets worse as time goes on. The only duelist I think could work is Jess's, and that's assuming that none of his poison gets tumbled away from, so. Difficult all the same. And Piglet, you know, people were asking for this. Why can't they build a comp around Piglet? This time they are going to. The fan vote, they see Piglet Vayne. I, yeah, that's probably appropriate. Well, just look at the numbers so far. The early game played out by a Team Liquid, just crushing it. And it's all pretty much CS lead. Not only do they have this early gold lead, usually we'll see that type of gold lead traded for the early dragon buff. But Team Liquid also secured the dragon buff. Dominate with the hard farm route on Rek'Sai. Uh -oh, binding hits. Vision. In comes the engage. Special knocked up. Goes down right away. First blood goes to Impaler. He's running those silver bolts. Is on. Cannot get out. Dominate <laughs> secures the trade. Secure indeed. Quas also teleported for this one. Uh, which forces off the rest of Team Coast, but it does mean they're going to lose a ton of pressure up top. And since Dragon's already taken, it means they have to make the most of this, try and dive, or just force the turret. Wow, they're going to double flash, Black Shield, Spell Shield, all used. Three-man turret take. Yeah, good job there. Quas does not want to make his teleport uh, futile. I mean, they need to make something happen out of that resource being used, force him off of the turret. They get two flashes for it. Now he's going to try and recall and get back up to that top lane. Sound not the quickest of turret destroyers, but left alone with a long time and the help of minions. Oh, oh wow. man, sheep. Two recall stopped by Quas, or of Quas, I should say. Yeah, a lot of time now to catch up in that lane. And in fact, with 
Ig special still gone. Piglet's in a 1v2, can only wave clear, can't buy down. Buys time for Chris. And look at that, so top outer goes down in favor of Coast. It was a one for one in the bot lane of the first place, and First Blood even went to those guys. So yet again, some decent early game plays by Team Coast. That does get them back uh, even in gold here, but remember, that's with an outer turret being down, and Team Liquid already put a pretty good amount of damage into their bottom turret. Of course, could easily swing back. Impaler, so the only thing about popping all the tunnels in your opponent's jungle is, yeah, I mean, it's a good idea to slow down Rek'Sai a little bit, but it does give away your position once again. Um, anytime one of those does disappear, you can tell as Rek'Sai. By the way, you can also tell if Rek'Sai, uh, if you hear the scream and there's a tunnel near you, even if it's in Fog of War, you should check it. Just to make sure, see if he's coming your way. She is coming your way. Chris finds himself a minion wave. Yells at it angrily. Whoop! Oh, he had that one. The auto attack check. Right, another lane sneak. This is like the third straight gank from Impaler bot lane. They really want to try to hold down Piglet. They have all the ultis available. I'm actually fairly surprised that Dominate isn't spending more time down there uh, in the strong lane because they would win the three versus three. Well, he's got a tunnel there. He can ult to it. Is that going to be in time at least? It's, yeah, it's a little bit slow. We saw how special, how quickly he dies. True. Um, and he still does not have his flash, so could happen again. Ooh. If Piglet gets off harassed like that, though, you get Mash Me low enough, and Pillar's not even going to want to go for this. If his AD carries at half life, even if you blow up a special, when Rek'Sai comes, uh, they'll be able to chase you down. Just look at the fact that Piglet didn't even tumble into that. Like, that was a guaranteed half-health chunk on a Sivir, but he's like, nah, -uh, something's up. Not going to chase this kill down. And look at that. Good and save Taylor play. Recalls in the brush. He knows there's nothing doing here. Very good by Piglet. Also very good by Expecial, by the way. Yeah. Uh, because he doesn't have his flash, he didn't want to inch up to that bush to even put a ward down. Putting yourself in danger of a Jarvan EQ combo. He'd love to have vision of that bush, but sometimes it's a little bit too dangerous. So they wait until the AD carry and support of the enemy team actually uh, seed ground, and they back up off of that bush to go get a ward down in it. All right, so ground being sort of equalized on both sides here. The lanes meeting roughly in mid-river. Team Liquid really not bullying out Jesses that much more than they were before in the mid lane. Early blue buff came to the Zerath at level 6. It's a bad matchup in the first place. Yeah. I haven't seen any ganks, and it's a 10 minion difference. Like, that's really not bad for that match is supposed to do to Jez's. Yeah. Jez is doing quite well. I mean, talked to a lot of uh, Challenger uh, Cassiopeia mains. A lot of them are very, very much in the opinion that Zerath is the poorest of, one of the poorest of matchups. Is Archangel's already completed, though? Yep, stacking up the mana plenty. So his ability power is going to be high. No health, though, for what it's worth. Someone like uh, Fox from SK builds Rod of Ages first for the durability, and then Riley second. I do expect to see Riley second cool. regardless here, but a squishier Cassiopeia. More attention bot lane, and Paler's still trying. They have a pink ward in try, so he's not been seen yet. But now he's going to watch, watch her walk past the Rift Scuttler, get seen. Chris getting chased out by Quas. And now just the mini wave player. So much vision from Coast was put down in the red jungle. So they have full vision of Liquid for the, the attempted steal. Here comes the teleport. Okay, well, there's the dragon secure. Dominic's going to spot Impaler. There's a smite as well. That is a one kill for nothing so far. But the clean disengage for Coast. Now, what can Team Liquid do with the 5v4? They bought that kill with a teleport as well. So Quas used his teleport. Chris didn't even try. They just wanted to even up that dragon count. And if Chris can get back to a lane, maybe Scion ult or something. If Coast are able to hold this, one kill given up for that second dragon here. They're going to try mid lane. They just got a ward spotting that the blue buff was up on the right side of the map. And it looks like that is not something that Team Liquid is attempting to take away. Now they are with Dominate. And so people got folded, he gets it. They are able to take away not only blue buff, but also huge amount of pressure bottom. They might uh, even up the turret count here. Right now, Piglet, uh, free farming in the bottom lane, has full control. And he's got support from the blue side jungle as well. Dominate and Expecial uh, screening for him, so he'll be alerted. Wow, very clean. 
They pulled Coast mid to give Piglet a 1v1 at worst. Let him solo push the turret. Very nice stuff. Yep, so taking advantage of their extra man on the field after that dragon. A lot of the teams that uh, I really like the strategy of giving up the early dragons and still going to fight them uh, just so you can pick up the extra kill and then pressure the map to gain something. Because, you know, as a lot of people have been echoing, the early dragons uh, don't change the game that much. Whereas extra turret down, you know, stealing a blue buff, some free farm on your AD carry, much higher impact at the early stages. And with all that free farm as well as the turret going down, Piglet finishes the Blade of the Ruined King already. Pretty yeah. big spike for him as Mashmi is still sitting on the pieces for his Infinity Edge. So a very scary duelist in vain is here, and Pele is like, hey, I got seen by a ward. Tries to get control over this southern jungle, and it looks like bot turret. The target of Team Coast, lots of members there to support this push. Blue Trinket will miss, used by Piglet, and that's going to make them feel pretty safe. They walk up a little bit more. Ward over the wall by X special. Find it by Sheep. Good damage coming out. Does Impaler go? Yes, he does! Ooh. X special just gets exploded again. There's a turret. All right, Silver wow. Ultimate popped as well. Let's see if there was any follow-up. Nothing there, though. So Coast get away, take down an objective, and they're able to secure the giant wave up top. Chris teleporting just in time to receive those minions that Quas grouped up for him so kindly. Really great plays by both teams here so far, taking the advantage they know they had. I just especially love Coast waiting around in the atypical scrying orb locations. So that, when they look for him, like, oh, it's probably safe. We can go avoid. Nope. I mean, all this attention bottom that Coast are putting. Obviously, they had, that was their game plan coming in. A huge amount of attention paid bottom with Impaler repeatedly visiting. Uh, is costing them as far as the jungler strength. Dominate two levels up. He's got a Sight Stone. So Team Liquid's plan of hard farming Rek'Sai, you know, getting that uh, tunnel network up, getting the early Sight Stone, We'll see if this pays off in the mid game, as yep. this is the time where you're you're really looking for that map control. Since they've got the extra sight stone, yep. as well as the teleporting jungler, this could be everything that Liquid set it up to. And the fact that, just to add on, Piglet can duel probably any single person on the map right now, assuming he plays it right. Yep. So you've got Outer Turret's dead, so extremely long lanes now, with one of the best chasers in the game. Definitely a scary situation here, potentially. For Team Coast, top lane under fire, four men here, Zareth still mid. That is the guy they put the damage on. So it's an interesting, not the 4-1 I expected. <laughs> they have Zareth mid yeah. for the 4-1 grouping, but uh, it will sort of work out. He can shove lanes really quickly, get rid of those minions, uh, and Mash is trying to move his way up, so Let's see if Dominate's able to catch them as they traverse the map. Well, Phoenix a bit low on mana right now. He's doing okay, though. Blue buff's gonna make that not a really big concern. Max has like got plenty of AD to clear a wave, though, so. Mm -hmm. Looks like he is also looking at the Yomu's build. Seeing that more and more frequently from the caster type AD carries. Seems the Infinity Edge crit nerf didn't dissuade people from Staying on the lower crit giving secondary items. Fan advance are not being picked up much unless it's the sixth item and you sell for it. Right now, Coast. I'm trying to think what they're specifically waiting for. Like, who wants the 45 minute team fight? Yeah, it felt like they were, since they were having trouble in the, in the early game, uh, they were just waiting until they could actually gain a foothold. You know, maybe looking for a misstep from Team Liquid, trying to catch somebody out. Because uh, they really do need to make use of the Sivir speed and outmaneuver Team Liquid, I think. If they're unable to outposition Team Liquid, it's going to be very difficult for them. Because as we said, this dominant, he's been hard farming on this Rek'Sai. He'll be much more of a frontline threat than uh, Impaler, who, while he can jump in uh, in close distance very frequently, we've gone over the many ways that Piglet has to deal with that Jarvan. So as long as Phoenix is able to stay far enough back, it'll be fairly difficult for them. Yeah. That being said, I'm a really big fan of the Fi Scion plus Cassiopeia combo. If Scion could get in front, allow a clean initiation for Cassiopeia, 
ulting and then flashing, it's much harder to uh, adjust your champion's position if Cassiopeia cuts off part of the animation by flashing. True. And right now, yeah, it's going to be a good meat wall and a lot of damage behind it, but at the same time, Team Liquid do have the individual playmaking available. So far, Coast have not opened themselves up to that kind of stuff. But with Dragon now up on the map, looks like we're going to see the team's battle once more. The last kill happened over Dragon number two that was grabbed by Coast, and Team Liquid capitalized pretty nicely with a turret kill afterwards. Coast do hold ward control over this southern river. We are also about to have Jez's get his 250 stacks, so he'll be able to heal the tank faint. Oh, he'll get bonus he AP and CDR, I believe it is. He's got it now. Alrighty. So still the heavy, heavy poke game, but I have to feel like that advantage goes a bit Zareth's way. So far, Coast did a good job of not taking damage, and the blue buff timed out. Phoenix doesn't have almost any mana for this fight. That's going to be poor because Jez's has a blue buff. So Cassiopeia with blue buff. Neutral objective is easy, easy pickings. Uh-oh, they are going to find Chris, though. Does he have to ult out? So far, he's not even at the chance to. Gets just comboed on, flashes away, and he's just going to die right off the bat. Had the chance to ult, didn't do it. Going to get picked off and uh, just runs angrily. So once again, they give up a dragon for a kill on the other side here. And it's the main tank, so they should be able to push in uh, try and put some pressure on this turret. Sivir, Cassiopeia, Wave Clear, doing their best. Nami all comes in to gain them some positioning on it. Special's at half HP, though. He's getting poisoned, and just Sivir Jarvan is just enough Wave Clear to keep Team Liquid from doing much more. Of course, their range champions, aside from Lissandra, a little bit immobile. Like, they can get binded on. I don't have any really good way of really escaping if that binding does hit. And it makes Team Liquid play pretty safe. Now mid under fire by Coast. Look at that one down to half, despite the fact that they're the team that lost a guy. A little bit of damage traded. But, you know, buy more time for the all-star here. Piglet getting some extra cash. He's about to Phantom Dancer here. We'll, we'll see if they transition into a strategy where they actually have him split pushing, because I actually do really like the Vayne split push in this scenario. Even though there's a Sivir to, you know, and a Scion who can close you very quickly, your team is backed up by a Rek'Sai Teleport as well as a Lissandra Teleport. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Piglet, very, very powerful right now. So he could handle himself one versus one. If multiple people come to the party, yeah. then it will be Team Liquid to back it up. And just to sort of talk about how the rest of the comp works here, because they've got a Zareth, and even a Lissandra to a certain extent, they've got the wave here to back themselves up if the other team tries to go for a 4v5 dive. There'll be no minions in the way, making it hard for Coast to press an advantage elsewhere. There, this is definitely a very well-rounded team composition by Team Liquid. The question is execution, as we talked about earlier in the day. And so far it's been, I would say, close to equal for both teams execution-wise. Neither team really winning a vision battle either. Nobody making a very strong move because the wave clear is so good for both. Piglet once again up into the split push. They're actually going 1-3-1 one, one here. Uh, here, so okay, here popped in. All right, Teleport comes in a special. Will, ooh, the stun grabs Impaler. Couldn't dodge away from Phoenix there despite the flash. Impaler looks for the ulti. Phoenix pops heal to get out of range, but Dominic gets caught. His flash goes down as well. They used everything here. Ultimate does wow. hit all three shots. One spell shielded does save Mash's life. His ultimate's down. Two side lanes have been shoved during that entire chase, by the way. Only cost them two flashes there from Dominate as well as Phoenix. Careful though for Quas. He's a bit alone. Will root Chris. Dodge the stun, but now he's gotten time for Impaler to show up. His There's e. no tunnels here either. Ooh, self ult to dodge the knockup. He's got to be up by now. It is. But he might just kill Impaler the whole time. Wow, that damage output. Quas in a 1v2. Picks up Impaler. Running from Chris. Here comes Dominate. Gets another slow. There's Chilling Smite. There's the knockup. Are you serious? Chris with a shield, though. Oh, yells at Dominate. He tanks it, though, so no knockback on the minion. By the way, mid lane turret went down to Piglet just now. Quas, man. So, the 1-3-1 one, one from Team Liquid. Since they had the early gold lead, since you know they gave up those next two dragons, they got kills in both times that 
Uh, they gave up the dragons, and then they also got objectives afterwards. This early farm lead, they were able to use it here, and a nice outplay from Quas. The, the jungler aggression bottom finally costing Impaler. He's a bit weaker. So first the sidestep. That one's pretty easy for Scion because it's very uh, clear where it's going. Then the timely ultimate on himself, uh, not taking the Q damage from Jarvan. And we all ta always talk about if you miss the EQ for Jarvan, then you're going to be in big trouble. Quas sees the kill opportunity by flashing back and flashes back in for it. So strong outplay there. Yeah. Here's your Phantom Dancer that you are looking for. Mm -hmm. well, Last Whisper is likely third. Could be Infinity Edge, but definitely going to be one of those two items here for Piglet. There's a decent amount of armor on Scion. Yeah. Broken and Heart Randuins is going to be nice, plus Ninja Tabby. So he may uh, go with the early, early Last Whisper. However, right now, split pushing. They want to make use of this teleport from Quas. He's down bottom once again. Splitting up. Zareth's going to handle mid here and create pressure. Piglet takes down another turret. Slowly but surely, Team Liquid increasing their advantages. Yeah, they've so far played this mid game, this fairly slow game, but they, they've split up the map appropriately. Again, their team comp works just so much better split up like this, whereas Coast really are looking for the 5v5s. And they're going to try one right now. Mash is going to no pop the ulti. This time. Black Shield's on Flash. No, not going to catch Dominate. Tidal Wave along the backside. Not going to catch anyone, though. Here comes the ultis in from Zareth. Mash loses a lot of health. Impaler forced to run down to 600 health. The chase in from Piglet just trades the ult for his life. Down he goes. All right. So that should be another objective here for Team Liquid. They just keep on singly picking off someone. Coast wanted to capitalize on the flashes that they burned with their last engage because they lost so much. But they were really close to that mid turret and Sheep missing the flash bind. Team Liquid are able to collapse and take this one. Missing a jungler is a bad thing for Coast. Down goes turret number four. Team Liquid now starting to crack into that second shell. Dragon is back up. There's going to be no contest for this one. Scuttle Crab just means that Coast gets to watch as now. Turrets will die faster, thanks to Dragon number two for Team Liquid. Yep, and this is a reason why a lot of pe teams uh, trying to use the early dragons ra uh, to get the enemy low rather than actually take them. Because if you get that lead early, you trade gold for the early dragons, then you get the mid-game control in which you can even up the score. And that's happening beautifully right now for Team Liquid. 5,000 gold lead for them, 5.7 actually. Pretty significant margin for these guys, 28 minutes in. All right, Piglet's going with the Infinity Edge instead. Okay. Big crits incoming. I like it. Yep. It's like what Jada talked about before uh, with the Last Whisper choice on the Sivir from I'm Blanking. I think it was uh, Maple Street saying that, you know, again, you buy Last Whisper to multiply the physical damage you already have. And with not a very large base of actually physical damage yet on Vayne, Edge is actually more damage than Last Whisper, even against someone like Scion. Just takes a lot longer to complete, but it looks like Team Liquid not worried about failing to reach a power spike that they would have reached right now if they had gone for Last Whisper. And notice how with the teleport down from Quas, he's now grouped up with the team, and they're fighting the Vision Wars rather than, again, just going mindlessly back to the split push. Mm -hmm. Grouping up, using the Xerath just to hold that mid lane, constantly wave clearing. Everybody else trying to fight for vision around the Baron. They're prepping this for the bait. Uh, they do not need to start a Baron. Uh, however, they would melt through it very quickly. Now, it doesn't feel like Team Liquid's style. They've been under control this whole time. Very no reason methodical. to make a big risk play, right? They're giving up dragons, not rushing into those. If they went for Baron, that would be very unusual for how they've been playing this match. Ahem, freak. <laughs> Ahem. What? They're doing a two-man Baron. All right. They've got a vein. <laughs> so it is unusual, but they're taking the risk here. They've kept ward control up, and no one at all is trying. They're not... Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Dominic! Oh, wait, that's a Xerath on his team. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. I know. He was just inside <laughs> the, the range. Same <laughs> I had the same thought. Don't worry. It's like, oh, that would be a sweet shot. However, so, it is Phoenix, so he it, doesn't feel like taking out his own jungler, Baron Buffalo. <laughs> he couldn't even if he wanted to. So, yeah, impressive play, Team Liquid. Got the vision control, kept everyone else mid, kept the entire team seen, and they said, okay, it's actually not a risk at all for Baron, because we know where all of you guys are. 
So they set it up very well. Nicely done, Team Liquid. I mean, Blade of the Ruin King, Bane that's this far ahead. Yeah. Woo. And as we said, methodical play here from Team Liquid. Immediately rotate up, take, an, take the secondary turret. We're not going to press an inhibitor because there are more secondaries to take. We're going to get all the gold on the map. Swing on down over to that mid lane here. They haven't actually bought after they got that Baron yet either. Looks like a special as well as Quas will go cash in. Infinity Edge finally completed as nice. well. This is huge. It's impressive to me how many turrets Team Liquid have actually killed, considering they've almost never tried to siege at all in this game. It's purely it's been always based... been some sort of pick. Yeah. yeah, it's been a pick or just a complete out rotation. They're never bashing their heads against the wall, saying, "All right, maybe Zerath will poke him out, and we'll get dra we'll like get the, the turret this time." Clear calls, the opening calm there. plays, very calm plays for Team Liquid. So 31 minutes in, I haven't seen really a good way in for, from Coast in a while. They just don't have pressure anywhere. Yeah, and remember the things that they tried, though. They tried to capitalize bottom. They, they were hoping Piglet would go over-aggressive in their matchup. Uh, Impaler's spending a lot of time down there. Not very fruitful. They've killed a special a couple times, though. Sure. They got, you know, some in gold income a little bit. Did get the first blood, I believe. Yeah. But all those kills have been trades. Exactly. Like It's not like they got a kill and then bottom turret, or a kill and then dragon or something, or a kill and then complete control of a southern jungle. It's just the kill. Yeah. And then the next thing they tried, using the Sivir speed boost in the mid game at the mid lane to try and catch somebody during the split. Weren't able to catch him, though. Ooh, flash all catches two. In comes Impaler, but he's got no health at all. Bubble misses, though. Dominate stuck on a turret. Tidal Wave catches four. In goes Quas, and that's going to be one kill picked up already. Will it be more? Chris forced to run. He goes down anyway. Dominate tanking a lot of damage, but still surviving. That is a two for zero. And as we were talking about before, control over the mid lane for a turret. Yeah. Uh, Team Coast got fed up with slowly losing advantages and leaking map control here. Try to force it. That's going to be another turret. Baron buff means that they can also pressure the next turret. Dominate using the Rek'Sai ultimate to go heal and get right back into lane. And that's going to be almost definitely the inhibitor. Five seconds on Impaler. It's a 4v3 right now. Sheep dodges one of them. Taking pot shots at him. And have to stay alive. By the way, in the bot lane, wow. Piglet on a tower dive. All right, so we're either going to see that fight again or we're going to see the team fight again. Either replay will be exciting. <laughs> Piglet and Mash me going with a double KO. I'm guessing the uh, the 1v1. The turret. <laughs> okay, we'll see that one first. Because we're not seeing the other one yet, which means this observers are like, guys, wait, we need that replay. All right, so this is just Piglet. He's got the Nami buff on him at the beginning. Does run out, but oh, oh he's got the turret! Red buff killed him anyway, but... <laughs> Red team's inhibitor has been worth? Worth? looked cool. Is that a worth freak? Of course, he, yeah. Actually, <laughs> the thing is he got an assist for that kill. He did lose uh, lose out on his Baron buff, though. I guess it was going to run out anyway. Yeah, nah. Worth. Easily. All right, so uh, Dragon stacking. That could still be a way if they were praying to whatever gods they subscribe to. For the 50-minute win for Coast. The Dragon gods. Maybe that they can get a uh, sneaky couple dragons here. This is only going to be their third, uh -oh. though. Dominic didn't see him moving in the brush. There's the knockup. There's a Scion Q. And yeah, that means the oh. tunnel gets canceled. All right, even better. They're able to get in position and use the sweeper to make Ended. a nice pick. Pink Ward into sweeper. Nice little path there from Coast, even better than just a dragon. They pick off the jungler first. All right, well, they made a play. Claw doesn't mean anything. Quick grab now. OK, that's number three. Number three, move speed for Coast. Not as useful as you would think with Sivir because of diminishing returns. Yeah. Still helpful, of course, just in general. Especially but. since we've seen outplays on side lane split pushes. Not uh, true, yeah. You know, when Sivir's not there. Yeah. See if Team Liquid return to the strategy. Piglet already showing that willingness to one versus one, even under turrets. Under inhibitor turrets, no less, which and are win. ridiculously <laughs> strong. That's true. Uh, now he's got the QSS, though, so he's probably going to feel just fine by himself. He's going to solo push that bottom. We'll see if the rest of Team Liquid wait around for Piglet to actually move up that lane before pressuring. Because uh, it is going to take him a little bit of a while to herd these minions up towards the inhibitor. So will Team Liquid opt into a fight Playing on a safe guaranteed here. 4v5? They are. Just pink ward up. They don't ne unnecessarily pressure that top lane while they wait for Piglet to get into position. Yeah. And of course, all the siege potential, or sorry, all the engage potential is pretty obvious and slow. 
Sivir ults, they walk at you, you're like, guys, we should go backwards. And then everything's fine. Yeah, and they have that very important flash on Xerath. Yeah. If, if they're not able to close, if Coast can't close this distance on Xerath, uh, they are going to take a large amount of damage. All right, everybody grouped up, though. Mid lane, super minions on the way in. Easily cleared, though. Saver doing a good job of that one. She's got two big completed items. I'm a little bit surprised to see him dip for both Vamp Scepter and the Fuhrer Boots. Last Whisper is a pretty important item right now for Sivir, so that she can actually deal some respectful damage at this point. Mash only 400 gold away from actually having the money to do so. That would be a really good break point for Coast. It's like a 30% damage bump to finish that item, so maybe he can make that. Well, it looks like they're feeding him the super minion line. So that's the one thing about having your inhibitor down. You know that you do have at least still a small line of income. Super minion line fed to Mash. So he just used his blue trinket just now, 25 seconds before Baron. He was watching if the other team was baiting on a pink board. They were not. So remember when Team Liquid got the Baron, uh, there was no vision for Coast. Yeah. I mean, later they can see when the Baron pops up on everyone else, but their timer for Baron is very much approximate timer. Yeah. I would say plus or minus five seconds, because some guys were landing at that time. True. And there and it is. Here it Immediate start for Team Liquid. This, I do feel, is a little bit risky. Dominate losing his health appreciably fast. But the poke from Phoenix, the title to disengage. They're just going to go for this one. Impaler even gets knocked up. There is no way he reaches Baron in time. There it is, picked up by Team Liquid. Stuns up on Chris. He's forced to ult away from this one. And wow, big advantage, Team Liquid. There's there's just no way that Coast can fight out in the open. They have zero, nobody who can actually hold down Piglet. Even if Piglet does get hit with a Binding or a Cassiopeia stun, he does have QSS now. There's Scion is, it's very hard for Scion to effectively hold that AD carry down because Vayne is so quick. So it's really scary for Coast to actually fight in the open. If Team Liquid are funnel in towards this inhibitor turret, however, they can hope for one of those last dish efforts, one of those fights around their gates. Let's see. Chris still stacking armor, only just the one magic resist item. So he's trying to survive Piglet. Mid lane going to be back under fire. Piglet is being brought back to mid. Buffed up and hitting the inhibitor. Down to half already, looks like. Oh, close there. And it's going to be a seated inhibitor here facing against the Baron buff team with a 15,000 gold lead. So now, bottom inhibitor turret, top lane inhibitor turret. Those are the things that Coast have to try to defend. Such an organized game here. Team Liquid pressuring. All the points that they need. A couple extra chunks here. Sion does not really feel it. Had the shield up. Let's see if they can hold Barrened up Cannon Minion here. Hard for them to clear that. The Magic Resist and Armor has gone back onto the turret for a little while. <laughs> back it goes. That's a good uh, Just yells at that's it. a good answer. Well, Piglet. All right, he's trying to get some damage done. Goes pretty slowly, though. And now attempt number three here on this wave. There's only one or two waves left of Baron buff, by the way. Yeah. So very slow progress being made, by team, being made by Team Liquid. Phoenix tries to poke them out. It doesn't quite land, though, and Coast are holding up so far. Yeah, the cannon minion has done the most damage to this turret. That's true. Rather than anybody actually on Team Liquid. They still have, you know... Oh! oh. Nope. It's very hard for them to commit fully to a dive onto Cassiopeia plus sign. Because if they do funnel in, and she stuns him. Then it will be much easier for Chris to land his abilities. Slash oh. only slows Piglet. They should push in now. That's a huge cooldown not available. Yep, that should be the turret. There we go. That is the turret going down. Inhibitor should follow. Coast, I don't think, can defend this. So two inhibitor kills for Team Liquid, a controlled game. Piglet, given so much space by Coast, he hasn't been able to make as many plays as he would like, but certainly a contributing factor to this game so far. I mean, that's where, really, since the beginning of the game, a lot of their power stemmed from. It was the bottom lane having the extra pressure, drawing jungle to them. Repeated jungle showings of Impaler down bottom. And the whole time, meanwhile, Dominate is hard farming. He's getting up his sight stone. He's providing the vision. Xerath's just wave clearing. Cross is doing the same. So 
really that's where a lot of their power centered around. And it's just Bents, the, as we said so many times, very clear and calm game here from Liquid because they never felt pressured. Especially maybe the only guy on sure. their team. He felt pressured because he got killed a couple times, but that's about it. I mean, we haven't heard of even a peep out of the crowd. Maybe a golf clap after that last inhibitor was taken. <laughs> you know it's coming. Woo! Crab! They're cheering for the death of the crab now. That's just cruel. Pete has something to say about that. Get that vision. All right. Everybody's circling down bottom there. Very, very methodical from Team Liquid. Oh. I mean, th that has been where the openings for Costa Bent. They right. got the small pick on to dominate mm -hmm. because they had a uh, vision inside the bush. So Team Liquid, not going to make the same mistake twice. This time, Scrying Orb on it. I think I know why Scrying Orb is blue. Because when it goes over the entire enemy team, it's like their tears that they got spotted. It even it's even called Scrying Orb. <laughs> Similarly, when your wards die, you're sweeping. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. This is going on. in, though. Ooh, forces a flash. Quas almost gets caught. Dominating the front lines. Tidal Wave comes in. Doesn't catch much. Jesses does burn the ult. He gets nothing for it, though. Ignite is on. Dominate low. First kill picked up, though. Quas in the front lines. Tanking the turret means he's going to die soon. Pops the Zonias. Two kills so far, though, for Team Liquid. Inhibitor turret going to fall as well. No casualties for the blue side. In they go right in front of the Nexus itself. They're going to try to heal and defend it. I don't think it's going to happen. The flash in trades with Mashmi. And this could be Team Liquid closing the game out. 42 minutes in. Slow and controlled the whole time. And looks like not much of a fight coming from Coast. Now the next is open. That's going to be the game closed out. 42-15. Team Liquid improves to 3-2. and two. Congratulations to Team Liquid. A well thought out team plan and very well executed as well. I think yeah. that Coast just came out of that with too many losing lanes. Yeah, they, every single there, lane. There wasn't anything that they can do with, with all those losing lanes. Uh, and Impaler's ganks only landing on support kills and not gaining any objective afterwards. Yeah. Just I, no doors open for Coast. Yeah, unfortunate for them, as you said. Losing lanes, ganks not turning into too much overall. I really, though, have to commend Team Liquid for their mid game because it's not like they siege all that well. Vayne is their AD carry, not the best turret killer by a long shot. And yet they still manage to find turret kills get objective control. That 23-minute Baron was actually freaking great. Yeah, I mean, clean. They, they had the correct steps for each move before they were decided to try and take something, uh, some objective that was worthwhile. I mean, they would either let Co start Dragon and pick up a kill afterwards, turn that extra man into a power play on the field, get it down a turret, or they would have the split pushing and play to their strengths of their extra teleport on their jungler. And they would have Quas and their split pushing AD carry, create extra pressure and try and get something out of that once Coast committed. Pretty much everything was taken after Coast committed somewhere. And so very good then by Team Liquid to pull Coast out. And well, they cleared him away. So Piglet gets his first win in the North American LCS here. Took him an extra week, but certainly a strong controlled vein performance. Pulled the champion out, 3-1 and 4. I would say one his lane. Was lane swapped on twice? They're like, get Sivir out of here. Just kidding, get Sai out of here. It's even worse. Like, everyone was afraid of him the whole time. Good performance. Yeah, I mean, uh, all around from Team Liquid, everybody, I think, I agree with the, clap, with the crowd. They all get golf claps. Yep. Very, very good performance there from Team Liquid. And this is actually the first time we've also on the other side seen Coast not actually start out all that well. They, they had a true. couple of glimmers of hope, a couple of nice picks, but yeah, as you said, all losing lanes. Really, just every single gank they went for seemed to fail. And this was the one time where they can't say, well, it was ours. Mm -hmm. And unfortunate for Coast, they're going to try to pick themselves back up for their match tomorrow. But to hear what the pros think of that match, we're going to send it down to Riv, who's standing by with Liquid's All-Star support.